As promised, here is the second Luttrell fantasy, the dragon fantasy, in its entirety hanging on the back of one of the bedroom doors. Uh, it's really difficult because of the shape and the size of the thing. Firstly, it's difficult to take a photo of the whole thing. But secondly, it's quite difficult to get it in an Instagram square because it just doesn't fit. So I always work these things from the bottom. I draw them from the bottom as well. So these are all little dragons and dragon-esque creatures taken from the Luttrell Psalter, which is my favourite medieval book because it has all these wonderful creatures in. Down at the bottom, you've got the baby leaf tail dragon and he's got a very soft spot in my heart because he was the first creature that I ever did as a kit and he's always been one of my best sellers, or at least he was until I started doing rude ones which outsell everything else. I'm particularly fond of the, the boring dragon with his little piggy face as well, partly because I think he just came out beautifully. I like this creature here, the one that's sort of spewing dragons. There's something quite Renaissance and Baroque about that thing. It's like a, a statue. And I've used small variations in stitch as well for the fish up here. These are done with a little bit of trellis couching. I've always found the knight and the dragon quite interesting because normally in medieval art, blue skin indicates an evildoer and you'd expect medieval people to be sort of anti-dragon. There's a wonderful, I think it's 1317 or something, somewhere in Norfolk in one of the flat bits, an actual report of a dragon that came ashore and ate several children before being disappearing again into the sea so you know you'd think people would be anti-dragon but we've got they seem to be pro-dragon with this little chap got a, a nice imperial eagle up there flat pack ikea dragon and uh we've got uh, the dragon wanging the going on there much much festivities and then at the top we've just got the modern touch with the motto of Hogwarts School. We've got a saber-tooth dragon, which I love. I think he looks very dinosaur-y. And they're all... Part of the, the art of doing these things is making all these creatures interact because, of course, I'll show you the book in a little while and the creatures are all sort of scattered throughout the book and they're here and they're there and I, I take them and make them talk to each other. It actually takes me about two, three days to draw one of these pieces out in its entirety and usually about a year to sew one if I'm not doing anything else. My, my latest one's a little bit on hold because I've been writing the books, but this is, uh, that was the Luttrell Fantasy. Luttrell Fantasy number two. So while we're looking at the Luttrell Fantasy, I'd show you the book which inspired the whole thing. This is the Luttrell Psalter. Well, this isn't the actual Luttrell Psalter. This is a copy of it, a facsimile. And it was produced in the 14th century for Sir Geoffrey Luttrell and his family. It's one of the greatest of all English prayer books. And it's absolutely full of marginalia and illustrations. In the beginning part of the book, it's, it's fairly sparse on the illustrations. But one of the things that really interests me, which I started off being interested in the big creatures, but it's these little bits and bobs between the lines that have come to interest me more and more. Because quite often it's these tails and foliage and fillers and stuff that really make the whole thing come to life because without them it just becomes things dotted around on a page to find correct pages that I wanted to show you. It's a very big book and it's very heavy. It probably weighs more than both the cats combined but it's absolutely dense with illustrations. So we've got this little chap here will turn up soon. We've got baby leaf tailed dragon that we just saw although I changed the creature at the other end for the dragon fantasy. So you have all this rich decoration. I don't really read the text. I'm not a great one. My, my Latin's rubbish, if I'm honest. 
I failed Latin at university. But this is one of the most famous pages from the book. This is Sir Geoffrey Luttrell himself being armed for the tournament. And I will be using this um, illustration when I come to do the Prince's sampler, which was is probably a couple of years down the line. But you can see how dense and rich some of these illustrations are. Some are religious. You've got saints and kings chatting away. Some are decidedly profane. You've got a fish boy there. You've also got in this book an awful lot of just domestic imagery. So if you've got male cooks preparing for a feast and then on the next page you've got the feast itself. There is also a picture of bear baiting somewhere which always makes me very sad because the, the look on the poor bear's face is just awful. And then I got I love this chap with the fish on his with a bird on his head. I haven't used him for anything yet. And then further back in the book, right at the very back, there is some medieval music. I won't be able to find it now. There you go, there's there's medieval music at the back which is apparently playable, not that I play anything. So that's The Luttrell Psalter, my favourite book, um, this copy of which was very kindly bought for me by my dad as a Christmas present. And it's um, very, very heavy.